For San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner continues to call out Governor Gavin Newsom's record challenging him to a one-on-one -on -one debate. In a statement, Faulkner said that the people of this state elected Newsom to lead us and he has failed. He's raised taxes on working families, allowed homelessness to skyrocket, and let criminals take over our streets. I'm not afraid to stand on my record and my ideas. So joining us now to talk more about this and his campaign is former mayor of San Diego and California gubernatorial candidate. Kevin Faulkner, great to see you, sir. Thanks for joining us. It's great to be back in studio. Thank you. Here we are. It's been a long yeah. time. It's... Let's talk about this new announcement, which is that you are suing the California Secretary of State because you're not being allowed to designate yourself as, quote, retired San Diego mayor. What's that yeah. all about? It doesn't really pass the common sense test. No. You're supposed to put what your primary occupation was the year before, and that yeah, was mayor of San Diego. So, you know, all these terms that they allow you to use and don't use, and we've said, look, it's, it's, it's again, it's just common sense, and you don't want to uh, confuse the voters. Everybody knows that I was am proud to be the former mayor of this great city, sure. so we're going to use all of our options available. The other news today is that you've challenged Governor Gavin Newsom to a one-on-one -on -one debate, both on a Spanish-language network yep. and then uh, an English network. Uh, have you heard from him? Uh, the phone hasn't <laughs> rang yet. Uh, we'll hold our breath, but, but, but look, I, I will tell you, I feel strongly about this. You know, the governor needs to stand on his record. Uh, I'm proud of my record. And, and standing on it and the things that you were just mentioned in, in the intro here. And the fact, Logan, that we had two million Californians that signed this recall petition. Californians of all walks of life. Uh, Californians of all political persuasions. And they want a debate. Uh, they want because this recall is happening, it is legitimate. And so I think it's incredibly important and is, like I said, somebody who's leading this recall effort uh, to say, Governor, uh, why are you afraid of your record? Get out here, debate. Californians want to hear it. And so I hope he accepts. And I think it's important why well, we also said not only on English television, but also Spanish language television. And I feel very strongly about that. There's been some discussion that you're more of a moderate and so is he. And maybe there's less difference between the two of you. Where do you see the space? Where do you see the differences? Oh, man, I'll, but, I'll tell you, there, there's some big fundamental differences. And, you know, we were just talking a little bit at the break. And, you know, as you start going down in the segment you just had on, on rising crime and a governor that enabled mayors all all across the state to defund the police. As you know, I did not defund the police in San Diego. Uh, it begins and ends by being a safe city and a safe state. We have to step up and support our men and women that wear the badge, keep our neighborhoods safe. And to do that, you better invest in them. And so I think that's a, a fundamental difference. An issue that I always also feel very, very strongly about. Um, is our state is too expensive. <laughs> yeah. And and what we see from this governor, this legislature is always, they want you to send more money <laughs> to Sacramento. And people are voting with their feet. They're leaving our state in record numbers. We lost population last year. We lost a congressional seat. If we don't make California more affordable and more livable quality of life, homelessness, uh, we're not going to see that positive change at the top. And so what this recall is all about is really Gavin Newsom's failures to address these topics head on. He gives you a lot of rhetoric. But no actions. I think what people want is somebody who's going to roll up their sleeves, who has done the job that we were able to do in San Diego, that can get results and get the state turned around. Do, do you think you can lower taxes, whether it's taxes on gas or property taxes or sales taxes or just income taxes, any of that? I mean, can you do something about that? Because it is, I think, probably one of the most uh, expensive states to live in. The most expensive yeah. state. And the answer is yes, we have to. Uh, and again, if, if we want you know, California is not to actually continue with the highest unemployment rate and poverty rate. We better darn well make our state more affordable. And we have a governor now who doesn't seem to think that this is a problem. <laughs> he doesn't seem to think that the highest gas taxes in the country is a problem. Doesn't seem to think the highest poverty rate is a problem because we're not getting any solutions. It's always status quo. And so what my campaign represents is a fundamental change that says we are going to reform to let you and to let San Diegans keep more of their hard-earned money in their pocket. And if we don't do that, our families aren't going to be, a, you know, be able to stay here in San Diego. And our kids and housing opportunities, we have to make California more affordable. We hear from a lot of these business owners that they can't find people who want to work because they're still getting the stimulus. And I understand Democrats still want to give more stimulus to people while our taxes are going up. What are your thoughts on yeah, do these stimulus payments need to stop? It's time for people to go back to work now. I mean, we, we've seen it. And look, you hit the nail 
nail on the head. Uh, we have so many jobs you see from you know some of our you know, restaurants, other small businesses, they're dying for employees to come back. We need to provide those incentives for people to actually get back to work because if we don't, we're not going to see the type of economy growth that we want and to see that opportunity. And so again, a fundamental clear difference between myself and what's happening in Sacramento. We're hearing about this Delta variant of COVID-19 and how this is um, starting to really kind of take shape and, 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 and influence a lot of different policies. Now masks are mandatory indoors in Los Angeles yeah. County. We also uh, heard from the American Academy of Pediatrics. Children over the age of two now need to wear a mask while inside at school. What are your thoughts on just yeah. the mask mandate? And yeah. well, well, again, I think the one thing that's been clear is that when it comes to Gavin Newsom in, in California, all we're going to continue to see is changes, uh, you know, not based on science. To your point, CDC is saying for fully vaccinated individuals, you do not be required to wear a mask indoors. And so I think when we start to see, you know, again, different changes, you know, moving the goalposts, different metrics, that gives people hesitancy. That causes people to concern, and we want people to get vaccinated. I think it's incredibly important, um, and I think we urge Californians to do that. But at the same time, we don't want to do anything that's going to curtail that and to say that we'll actually have the exact opposite effect that we'll say to folks that, they, that maybe they wouldn't because of all of the changing mandates and others. So, again, I think you have to be very clear. You have to follow the science, and in this case, it's very clear what the CDC has said and what they haven't said uh, in terms of indoor and in the classroom. That first question on the ballot is, should Governor Gavin Newsom be recalled? And if 50, more than 50 percent don't say yes to that, then we don't even get to the candidates. What has to happen maybe between the candidates to get that question answered in the affirmative so that the next question moves on and that and yeah. then uh, there's a decision to be made? I think Californians are ready for a change at the top. I, I think that they, they believe that one party rule has not been serving our state well. And so, again, I think that's why you saw literally two million Californians of all you know, political parties signed that recall petition. And so I'm, I've never been surprised that we're going to have as many candidates as we are because, look, I think that's a testament to the frustration and anger that so many people have with this governor and lack of action. So I think Californians are ready to go to the polls. I, we're in a two-month sprint now, the September 14th. And all the issues that you know we've been talking about, how expensive it is in California, skyrocketing homelessness, crime, they want a governor that's going to tackle them head on. And so I think this recall is absolutely going to be successful. Uh, and I'm traveling this great state of ours uh, talking about the need to bring Californians together for positive change and to put forward the reform agenda that I know the state needs. Well, tell me about some of the places you've been, some of what, what people are saying, and how do you get the moderates, the independents, and the Democrats to vote uh, to remove Governor Gavin Newsom? You focus on common sense. And all the things that we've been talking about this afternoon, this evening, have really been based on common sense. You don't defund the police. You shouldn't allow ten encampments on your on your sidewalk in terms of homelessness because you want to give people the help and the support and insist that that happens. Um, and so I think when you phrase it in terms of common sense and real action, you will get Democrats, Republicans, and independents who said it is time for a change at the top here in California. Um, and, and again, I think that there's a hunger for that. I think that there is a lot of momentum for this recall effort. Californians have a real sense of urgency. Let's make this change now. It's too important to keep things the way they are. So what does the rest of the week look like for you? A uh, lot of a lot of other traveling. I've been all you know. Last week was in the Central Valley. This morning up in up in Los Angeles, and and really just you know talking with with Californians uh, about the need for change uh, and the need that we can get this state back on track. And this is something that. You know, having been engaged in this now for, for four months, uh, I, I feel very energized. I, I feel very uh, strongly about, you know, the support network that is out there that folks said, Kevin, let's go out there. Let's get this thing done. Let's make a change in California. And when we do, I think we're going to send a strong message to the rest of the country about how we can turn things around. Well, we hope to uh, follow you on this journey, and hopefully you'll be back, and I'm sure we'll be speaking with you uh, many more times over the next couple of months. great to be back in studio. Thank yeah, you very great much. Great to see you as yeah, well. I uh, appreciate it. So former San Diego Mayor Kevin Fox.